so all right so we are recording now see you know what what i will do now right every time when i'm going to solve any problems i will first create a function i will read this right i will just read the statement here write a function you know called contents which has two parameter that accepts two string as an argument right so when whenever we call argument that means here this is the argument okay argument means the value right we you're gonna send to the function so when you call the function you're gonna send two value both are string right in that case you have to receive it in a variable and to receive an argument we call parameter right parameters are the variables which gonna store this variable in the memory sorry this argument in the memory right so first you know what i will do that's the function right so let's say let's call here this line okay i mean first you have this okay let me comment this out right let me comment this out uh, just use this one for now i have this function i don't know what to do inside right now but i have this function right this code runs okay this code executes so when code uh, executes you're gonna have call stack right this is a call stack okay so here it will get global execution context so let me create a global execution context uh let me make it different color so this will be global execution context Uh, it has two part right uh, the first one is memory and the second one is code to execute right code will execute here on the second part the first part this program runs i don't have any variable outside right no variable just console log function okay that is what we're calling right so that means the memory can have only one thing that is what function right so that function is uh, C O N T A. Okay, let me go back. Change the color here. Maybe make it different, right? Also, I want to make this little thinner. Let's call it content function. Okay. contents right that is what there so this function will be undefined because remember we have just normal variable and the function we stored in the variable right so first it will be undefined always remember when you have function expression it will create a memory variable first okay now code will execute where code executing here right not here but what will start is executing from top to bottom right so the first thing is this one so the function will be assigned to this variable right that's whole function definition okay whatever you're going to write here will be assigned there uh, so that is the first line line one will be like assigning the function to the variable done now you have console log right next code will execute in the line 13 console log and you are calling the function so function has two parameter right this function will execute so when function execute what happened now because you are executing this contain function right contains functions will execute every time when it executes it will create again execution context every time right so there will be memory and code to execute so in function execution context right uh, let me just make it bigger here so that uh, you know it's much more easy to write so you have memory just a copy of this one right whatever here i'm just trying to put here then there is two things two variable what is that a string one and a string two right okay now string one because you're gonna send the data from here right what you are sending caterpillar like 
first one is caterpillar and the second one is peel right so like caterpillar like that and the second one is peel so these two value will be stored now because code start running once the memory created code will run you're gonna create first here caterpillar and then peel here okay fine done now what should we do right inside here to check because we just need to return boolean okay so now we have because our code is running right our code is running we assign the value string one string two in the memory now we have to do some process so so now to check if this string is inside here right if that is true return true if not then return false right so i'll check so i mean now you have to find out how i'm going to check something inside other string right so there is built-in function called includes right includes right includes okay so you have to understand what includes does so this will check uh for example let's say the string one right string one is the is the object now this act like an object right also dot includes you can apply includes right something like this so string one dot includes right string two okay so this will return something called uh, boolean right I mean, this will automatically give you true or false this includes function returns what true and false how i know that i can check here right i don't know i'll check here now let me go to the console and let's say this is a character killer right whatever okay that's the string string one dot includes right this is the one includes function and right now is false because i'm not there is nothing to check right but soon i put here pi something okay which is inside that right inside this caterpillar so true i get true so i get this result true right and i'm just going to return directly that whatever result i'm getting i'll return right maybe false maybe true whatever right so i know how to use now right uh, includes includes is the use for checking something inside the string right right now okay maybe you're gonna check in the array also something inside the array right but let's stick the uh string right now so string when string behaves like an object then you can call dot includes this string right you can do that okay string two fine uh now uh now right yeah so that is done you know almost we finish right so how this will process in the memory now so the first thing was assigning the variables here and then you calling right you are returning now here return okay uh return what string one dot includes string two true right so this returns is boolean boolean right and uh, you know what when you have return once whatever result you get here uh that will be returned back to the console right if you have console here you know you're gonna get true or whatever false okay so now every time you call this function right it will create this same process it will create that uh, execution context for the memory uh, it will enter inside the call stack here it will go inside here right so we can call it a function what uh, contents contents function will enter here and return return what return boolean that will be true or false okay it will return boolean right every time it returns this function will be removed from the call stack but we we are using this function many times right so every time that process repeats it's going to create execution context it will assign the new value 
to this string one and two i mean the whole process repeat right so you have new value here like this okay so that means the execution created every time every time you assign the new value uh, here whatever the first string second string then you returning by checking it like this right so you get the idea the only problem now right here is a capital letter and here is a small letter but still the answer is true right but right now with our code it will return false okay so how are we gonna fix that one it says the function should ignore any differences in capitalization right ignore it ignore means you have to make everything similar right so what should we do now so maybe i i will just convert this string first to lowercase and also this to lowercase right and then i will check for include okay so to uh, so how you convert now object dot to lowercase okay so whatever lowercase i will receive from here right then inside that i will check this one so i will also make this lowercase in case okay just for you know lowercase and done right so that is all the solution we have uh, let's see if we get the correct answer true 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 false false right so you have true 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 and two last one is false okay done so let me remove this reset and let's check for something else right now you tell you you give me the problem right which one i should solve now just tell me which one i should solve okay just tell me right okay maybe this i should be solving right from the function or array or whatever right just tell me which one can you help me out to find like there was any difficult problems between the conditions functions and loops you want to solve anyone has any questions in mind like uh, so let me pause quickly right and then we're gonna okay so i'm going to take uh, the divide by either from the loop that was the b section b the last question so i'll copy that and uh, let's close this i'll just put here for now So let's read the question first right what he's saying is write a function name divide by either so this is either this is a function name there is three numbers parameter num1 num2 num3 right basically max okay the, the is saying uh that function accepts three number as argument fine the function should print out all positive number right less than max so less than max okay that are divisible by num1 or num2 so this is the number right so if you read this one what we understand is num1 and num2 is just used for dividing max i mean between number between the max right so these are like a divisor divisor what you call that something to divide something right okay either okay the function does not need to return of any value just print right console log it okay you don't have to return every time you find something divide by num1 num2 just print in the console it should just print to the terminal right the function should print out all positive numbers less than max that are divisible by num1 or num2 okay fine so let's write this right let's write this and first i will write this and then i'm going to explain in the uh you know even i explain first right how it will work uh let's go back okay let's see so i will just take one example right this one let's put it here 
that's the function divided by either right uh, you running that function so first thing what gonna happen uh let's write what will be the first thing so the function will create what uh, i mean you have the you have the call stack right here is the call stack simple call stack under my hands i cannot write it straight you know it's just moving i need to practice how to paint right this is the call stack okay every time when program runs right it will it will use call stack to start your program so here will be global execution context so let's look at this right try to understand that i'm going to use this uh, you know so the first memory will create al always right so in our case we don't have any variables in the global okay what we have is just one function right so that function is if by either right either okay like that so if you have this in form of uh, what you call that variable right like const uh div by either and then you you write the function right okay if you write like that then this will be the variable so the variable is here fine now code will run code start running because we have no more variables or function this is the only last only one code will run the first thing it will this uh, function will be assigned to this variable because first thing that 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 is the first code right in our program that is the first thing so it will just assign that function here okay fine now our question says right that once you assign inside that function you're gonna write something right you're gonna write some code you're gonna solve that uh, you know problem so let's inside the curly bracket we're gonna solve right so we need to console log something okay you have you have here what n1 n2 and max right max like that so we have to think okay n1 need to divide the number right so let's say max is 9 or maybe 15 right that means i need to check now start from 1 2 3 until 14 okay because less than max i need to find all this number right and then each number i will make sure i will divide by n1 and n2 and if that is true then i'm just console log that that is what question is saying to do us right so in order to get number one two three uh, until 14 until max right i have to write the loop for let i equal to one because this time i need number from positive number one two three like that until if i is less than max right until max okay and then i plus plus so this will give me right this will give me the number you know like uh, this will give me the number uh i from one to like that uh, until i mean less than max okay you can get the idea right so i will check now if because i have to check because let's say this is the first round i need to divide this number by n1 and n2 so i have to check so if i mod n1 equal to zero or right or or because either one or both does not matter right again i mod uh n2 right i mod n2 is equal to zero if that happens if that is true if one of them is true right in case of or what happened even one is true then that is true if both is false then it will be false right so if one of them is true then console log then console log 
high, right? And done, you know, we just have to console log the number if it is divided by n1 and n2, right? And this loop will make sure it will give us the number 1 until 1 less than max, okay? So if that is max is 15, then you get from 1 until 14, right? So that is all we have to do. So how it will solve in the in the memory here, right? The first thing is you assign this. Then the for loop will start. For loop, here is a for loop, correct? So for loop will, you know, it has its own process. For is also function, right? So it will again create its own execution context, okay? You're not going to see that, but just imagine this is what happening, right? Inside the for, uh, memory and code to execute. So memory is what? I, right now, I is the only memory, right? Fine. So code will start. So I equal to 1, so it will put 1 here, okay? Now it's it's checking now, right? It's checking I is less than max. True. When you have to, all the time it is when it is true, right? Then you're gonna do this part. Okay. So inside here you will if if you, you have if right, if true means basically true, then you just console log I, right? If you get true here, console log. So it will console dot log I. Okay. So the I will be printed in the console here, right? So I, let's say, I mean, whatever, you know, the, I don't know what is the N1, N2 and max, but let's say maybe three, right? It printed here, correct? Every time you get true. And then I++ plus plus happen, right? I++ plus plus happen. So now I become two here. It will check if that is true again. Again, it will console log that I, right? Or false, it will false, then it will ignore it, okay? Then I++ plus plus again happen, right? The process will repeat how the for loops work, work, right? This for loop is also a function. So this process will repeat until there is a true condition. Okay. Just imagine that, right? Just imagine like that. Once the the for loop will be false, right? When once there is a false condition, then this will stop. The whole process is stopped. And uh, you know, like this will be also out of the call stack, right? For first one, I mean for the first call, right? Uh, look at here. That is the first one. This in this one again it will start, right? Again, this everything repeat again, okay. Okay, in case of global, right? Because we have many functions running here, one after another. So it will finish, this will finish, then this will finish, then only the global execution context will be deleted, okay? Because it has to complete the whole code in that page, right? So let's write it quickly here. I mean, you get the idea, you know, I mean, how it will work, right? So, uh, okay, one more thing I, I forgot, right? I forgot to tell you what. Yeah, you know, so you have the divide by function and every time, re remember that every time you're going to have what? We are calling that function, right? So this function will execute when you call that function. Uh, divide by divide by either, okay? And you passing number like ten, twenty, max, whatever, hundred, you know, like that. So when you have this function running, this function will create here. You know, it will be enter inside the call stack. That's the that is the process we have to remember divide by either okay and that function will execute and that is all the process we have done right inside that function you're gonna have again the call stacks so because i missed that process okay i missed the whole thing right we just jump to straight i mean to the for loop but this for loop happens inside that function okay inside that function right so i mean i, I mean i hope you get, guys get the idea okay oh uh, that's too much clock right uh, let's see if i can clean this up Okay, let's let's uh, let's write this code and then we're gonna talk again. So const. So you have uh, a num one, num two, and max like that. So you know 
when you call this function it will create the function execution context right with this name and inside that function this process is going to happen so first for loop we have to write for loop right so let i equal to one i is less than what uh max right because we have to be less than max i plus plus and then here we check if i not one but i right i mod n1 or num1 right num1 if that is true equal to zero if that is true or right or i mod num2 okay even if that is equal to zero if that these two are true right in that case uh you just console log that i i okay so this is all you have right this is all you have to do so if you run this code so you can see three four six eight nine twelve whatever here fifteen right that is the first one and you have like five seventeen for the second one so uh i hope uh let me see right that's too much clock is that clear guys i mean i mean you get the idea right how this will work sorry let me i'm just clicking too much right okay let's take one more example give you have any example now just tell me right anyone has anything only thing you have to remember is if there is a function executing right that will create the execution context okay and that will enter in the call stack and the, whatever the process inside that function will be completed and once the process is complete that will be out of the call stack first is global it will go inside the call stack global has all the memory for the variables and functions which is in the global and then each function line by line the first function will finish if there is another call again for the same function same process repeat for everything right okay just tell me if there is any question from your side anyone So again uh, almost same thing uh, here also so i will try to explain this properly so it says no no o's that's just the function name right and it then function accepts a string as an argument so you are sending this string so if you see like that how are you going to write function const no o's right equal to function and you have a string as an argument so you must receive it in your variable right so it says print each character of this string right except o print console log right don't need to return anything okay in the terminal no need to return okay just print one by one so the first thing it will come in my mind is uh, okay whenever i call this function inside i have to go and read each character one by one so the only way i can do that is by loop right so let's write a for loop i equal to what because this time i'm dealing with the character of the string so when you have array or a string right and you have to deal each item each character or each element then your index will be zero always simple you know if you are dealing with a string or array and you have to start from g zero index okay because you have to grab and check one by one right so start with zero index but when you adding when you multiplying doing something else which when you don't need index then you can start with one which we just did in the previous uh, problem right okay because we need a positive number from one to, until less than max so we start with one but every time if there is index involved then 
start with 0 as a first value for i, right? Okay, so i will be less than what? String dot length, length, right? And then i plus plus. So this is okay, right? I know I can get now. Let's call it character, right? If I have index, I can easily get character from the string by just putting this. So zero will give me the first character. Let's say in code, I will get C as a first character, right? Then I'm gonna, I have C now, right? So question said, check if that is O or not, check that. So I will say if this character is not equal to O, right? So I have done mistake here. It should be together, right? Like that. If that character is not equal to O, then only you console log. Okay. So done. That is done now right uh yeah finish you know that is all we have so let's check and then i'm going to explain this in the so you see c d e right because first index zero i will get c i will check c is not equal to zero that is true and that's why i'm inside the if and i'm going to print that c next time i plus plus i will be one one is less than the length that is five four right one is less than four yes again i will go star one string one i'm gonna get o right o because index one is o so now character has o okay it's gonna get o right like that so now i'm checking o is O is not equal to O, they are equal, right? So that's why I said not equal. You know, if I just put it like this, O is equal to O, right? That will give me true. But I say O is not equal to O, that is false, automatic. So when there is false, what if does, right? It never go inside and do the work. It will just go to the next line. And next line is what i plus plus means there is no more code so it will just handle this part now i become two so two is less than four yes then here is two string two which will give you d right now here you're gonna get d stored in character so <coughs> let d not equal to zero o right true then you're gonna print d because they are not equal and that is what we're saying right they are not equal not equal to o, true then after i plus plus again i will be uh four right zero one two three three sorry three so you're gonna get i string three that will give you the e right e so here you're gonna get e stored in character if character e that is e not equal to o that is true you just print that e and i plus plus now i become four right so four is not e uh, sorry four is less than four that is false and it will stop because there is nothing to do anymore done right so this function execution finish it will enter the next one so let's copy this code right and try to understand or maybe i'll just copy this whole thing i mean you get the idea but let's go back and try to understand there so i'll try to make it neat and clean this time so that uh, everyone understand clearly Okay, so uh, what I will do, I'm just going to put the code here in the sideline. The first thing is call stack, right? So I'll just make this call stack like this. Just imagine this is a call stack. I don't know if I can uh, erase some part here. 
or it will erase everything right so that is not good so i want to make you know i just the line is not straight right let's make all stack with a red box okay i'm trying to make a straight line here okay so first will be global execution context enter in the call stack okay call stack is the only place right where the code executes line by line so now we create our global execution context for this this is the only code in our page okay so let's start with our global execution context i will make a little big so that it should be easy to fit everything so here i'm gonna make memory and code to execute so this is our global execution context okay so now tell me what are the memory here we have nothing right just the one function that is no o right or a variable called no o's like that okay so this will be undefined right now just imagine that now code will execute there is no more variables and function that's the one only so the code execute so this function will be assigned here clear that's the first line right now the second line is execution of this function no o's right so second line is first function no o's execution so and you have code inside right like that so this function will execute so what happen when you execute the function it will create the new execution context right just pay attention now right here same thing because function has memory and all that you know so that function execute it creates this it has to go inside here right so just say no O's function in, in enter in the call stack now it will create a memory so what are the memory inside this no O's you have this str right that is the str str okay that's it anything else then there is a for loop we come back later uh yeah there is a let character right chr that is also inside the for loop uh and if else everything inside the for loop right fine 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 so that means uh uh okay so what we can do right let's imagine inside this function just imagine right we have i that is uh, right now nothing right and also you have a uh, character chr okay just imagine that so i will just make this big little bit right so that it will be clear because we are executing this first function okay first function so str uh, you have i and character right character that is all the variables you have i is let i str and the let character right clear now code will run i mean this is just a memory right code will run first thing is str so what is str that is code right so code will be add here now let i equal to zero so i'll just put zero here character now right so because code is running here okay line by line so now let character so you will say character is what uh str square bracket i right so what is i right now zero correct so this will give me what str look at it this str zero it will give me c right so i put c in my character fine now you have next line is condition right check condition here it will run if just look at this if character not equal to zero so what is the character right in the memory c so you check c is not equal to o you get true so you know how if work right that means you enter inside here and you're going to console log c so let's say this is your console right 
So you just print C here first. Now I++ happen, right? So we are still inside this function, okay? We are running the loop, right? We are inside the loop, we're still inside that function. Basically loop is running, right? Loop is running, okay? Just remember that. I++, so I will be now one in the memory. Now you check one is less than four, the length, right? Yes, it will go inside here. Uh, again, you add here a string one, uh, that will be next string one will give you O, right? O from the code. So you put here in the character, you store what? O, right? Because character is equal to string one. So you put here O. Now in the if you check O is not equal to O, that is false. So that's why you never go inside this place. You just do I plus plus and uh, you know you get uh, I equal to two now. Now you're checking two is less than string length. That is true. String length is four. So you're going to go inside again here, right? String I. So look at here. String I that is right now two. So this will give you D, right? D. 0, 1, 2, you're going to get D. Because we are doing character equal to, remember that character equal to string I here. So that is what is happening. This string 2 will store the value in the character memory. So that will be D here now, right? D. Now, after that, the next line is if character, so here, after that, it just run here, right? If character is not equal to O, the D is not equal to O, true, right? So you're going to console log D. Okay. Now I plus plus. So I will be three now. Just change here three, right? So again, string three, because you have I here, three. Next line is what? A string i that is 3 will give you new character that is uh, d, right? Uh, no, 0, 1, 2, that is 3. Okay, this one, e. So you have e now here. Okay. Now you're going to compare if e is not equal to o. Again, you get true. Then you're going to do console log character that is e, right? Which is coming from the memory. And you're gonna print E, right? Then I plus plus. So I will be now four. So in the memory I is four. You do the compare. Uh, just ha everything happened here, right? You just compare now. After if you're gonna compare, you know, like uh, I plus plus is happening here, right? So you compare. Once you have this memory change to four, you're gonna do four is less than four. That is false, and it will stop, right? So once the code is finished inside this function, remember that, which is happening here, right? In the call stack, this will be pop out, out or remove it, remove from the memory, okay? Gone. And because we have still this line of code, right? Our global execution will be still there. Now this function again, go inside the call stack. Again, go inside here. No function will go again with a new value, which is school, right? School. So this time, again, you have to create this execution context. This time your string will be not code, but school. School, okay? Here will be string school. Again, I will be zero, start from zero, right? And character will be right now, what? Basically, when the code run, okay? You're gonna get, uh, character you're going to get a string zero that we're going to get first one from the school here for zero you're going to get s when i become one you're going to get c when i become two you're going to get h when i become three you're going to get o so this time it will be false right again same process here will be false uh then it will be ignored okay but as long as there is a true you're going to print that character right so that's how it works Every time when you're calling the function, 
it will create a new execution context and the whole process inside will repeat there right it will create a memory it will create all the if else conditions everything runs inside that function memory right and once the function is finished running uh, it will be out of the call stack and there is no more function that means the whole program is done running so that global execution context will be also removed from the call stack and that is the end of the code right for that file so okay guys so is that okay clear yeah so if you have any question right just let me know again i will explain uh if you, right now you have anyone any anyone has anything more Here we can do one of the decomposition decomposition right okay yeah let's let's take that uh, you have any question just tell me which one uh anyone did okay 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 fine fine okay let's find right so i'm gonna clean this up oh. Okay, so uh, I mean I can take any right does not matter. So let's pick prime number. Okay, so again I have to combine this to right. Fine. Let's take the simple one here. Just take this. What is that double vowel right? Okay. So let's take that one. So the here question is write a function double vowel that accepts a string as an argument so same thing you have this uh, string argument the function should return the string where every occurrence of the vowel in the original string is repeated twice consecutively right so uh, let's say here is a r that is not a vowel u is a vowel so that means you have to just double it right n n is okay e is a vowel so you just double it like that so that means what i understand is uh i have to write a function in such a way in that function i will first get each character from the string uh that is happens by loop right and the loop will allow me to select each character because I'm going to make a loop to run until the length and each index will give me each character right one by one so every time when I have a for loop I'm going to get character and then I'll check if that is vowel or not right if no vowel then I will just store that as it is somewhere if that is vowel then I'm just gonna add extra same character right and store it again so that's the point here okay so first let's write it quickly the function or maybe const double vowel right equal to uh, function so i'm getting a string here so i need to check vowel also right i need to check for a vowel also so in that case if i need something to check or verify I can just store it here right so let's let uh, let vowels i'm just going to store that in a you know variables uh call it the vowel something like a e i o u that is my vowels now next thing is 
I'm going to return this whole thing. I'm not printing, right? I have to return that because when I return, so that value will be added to this console log and that is what we're going to print in the final, right? So in that case, I need to uh, loop, right? Do the for loop, okay? So, and also I need a storage, right? To store all these things. Remember, when you need to store or when in, in, you need to add something, you make sure you put it outside, right? Of the for loop. So let's call it a new character or new string, right? Something like that equal to empty string. So here I'm going to store my new result, right? Now it's time to get a for loop. So I need an index. That's why I'm going to make O as a starting point. I'll check if I is less than uh, string dot length and I plus plus, right? I can store my character in a variable char and how? Just call the string and pass the index. So zero will give me R, right? So I have R right now. Just imagine I have first character that is R, right? Just for zero. This is the first time, okay? So that's why I get R, right? From I'm just talking about this function right now. If this function you have written correctly, that means the rest will run automatically, right? You don't have to worry about anything. It will do the job, okay? So I get R here now, right? It's time to check if that is vowel or not. Because I have to complete the whole problem, right? Inside here, because I have R, now it's time to check if that character R. Uh, so what I will do now, right? And I, I need to check that inside the vowels, okay? So the, remember that vowels, that is a string, right? So let's call it vowels dot includes this character. So a string, you have this string, inside that string we will check if that R is present or not. So either I will get true or false, right? So if this is not inside, then I'm going to get false here. So when I get false, right, that means that is not vowel. So I will just save it as it is, right? So new string plus equal to or maybe let's make it nice like this. Again, I will call new string again plus this character. I will just save it like that, right? No changes, okay? Fine. Now I plus plus happen again after this line. I plus plus happen after if I plus plus. So I will be one. One is less than the string length. What is the string length? Uh, six, right? So one is less than six true. You're going to get inside here. One for one, you're going to get uh, the new value that is u. So this time, the character is u, right? Let's say u. Now let's check for vowel. What, what we have to do, right? For vowel. So see, that is what I have done a mistake, right? You're going to only able to do this, right? if this is true for example in case of r here we get false so in case of false i still need to do this right so what i will do now i'm going to put this in the else part else 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 here right because every time when if is false i want to make sure my character is stored in the new string here like simple like this right okay but if I get vowel in case of u, that is the second one, right? Second one is u, that is vowel. So I will get true here. So my question says every time when you have vowel, right, you just go back and, uh, you know, call whatever you have in the new string. So right now you just have r there. r plus character, that is u, right? And you add again character twice okay so you have two you added in this in case of vowel so yeah so that is all right uh, let me remove this
and you're going to see the result i mean it will repeat the process you know the for loop it will run until the last line of item right so let's check now i mean the for loop is done after the for loop is finished running you have to go outside and whatever the result you have here the new string you have to return it so that this console log will receive the function will receive that return value return a uh, new string right okay so let's run that so i see r u u n n e r right i mean it's just uh is okay right it's working so but here we don't have the complex function right you don't have any complex function so let's uh, uh do the remaining part right uh on the monday okay let's but for, before we even go here right that's okay you try your thing but before even we start this part uh we're gonna the next week we're gonna work on this uh let's go back mostly the object right object so we'll i mean we're gonna finish this whole thing next week by whole next week right uh, but we, the object will be most important also array then you know we're gonna solve this decomposition as well but if you have any question right in any part you can let me know okay anything else guys the object will be very important okay we have to get the object right the only thing you will be able to understand is repeat the process repeat repeat right call stack uh then the execution context global execution context happened first time you just put all the variables there now it, it start taking function each by one by one when the function is running that will enter inside the call stack and whatever in the function variables right whatever is there you know you have to make a new box create all the variables solve it all if there is for loops now you remember the how for loop work complete the whole process and then you're done right from the that function is when the function is finished you're gonna out of that call stack i hope that is good enough for now so yeah just do the practice right there is nothing else you can do so let me stop unless you have any more question so i'll just uh send this video online if you want to check